I to C, RPI2, PCF8591, Analog Output, C, BCM2835 Library. Enter Integrated Circuit. Raspberry Pi 2 running Raspbian. Integrated circuit with digital input, 8-bit analog output in 333 microseconds at 100 kilohertz bus speed. C programming language using the Broadcom library. Here's the digital, here's the circuit diagram. And the system. The circuit close up. Oscillator pin is open. It's monitored by the oscilloscope. The analog output pin is open, monitored by the digital multimeter and the oscilloscope. Here's the C program. The library is selected. There's support for printf and scanf. The second byte for the IIC bus. This bit selects analog output. The expected voltage will be calculated. The digital count that should create the expected output voltage. Prompt the user to enter a digital value. The user enters an integer between 0 and 255. Then calculate the expected voltage. Print the expected voltage. Print the count in octal, hex, and decimal. Define the buffer containing the second and third bytes for the IIC bus. Print the two buffer bytes. Stop if the library was not found. This is the address for the D to A chip. More later. Send three bytes to the chip with a clock speed of 100 kilohertz. Then end the program. It's okay to include these two lines. If included, the IIC pins are returned to GPIO. Here are the program results. There were the digital counts, the calculated voltages, and the measured voltages using the multimeter, and the percent errors. They're all the same up to 100 kilohertz with a little bit more noise. Now examine the IIC bus signals. It's the analog voltage, internal oscillator, running at greater than 1 megahertz, there's the data and the IIC clock. Measurement of the internal clock frequency. 1.053 megahertz. How much time is required for the analog voltage to appear at the output pin? At 100 kilohertz clock speed, the time is 333 microseconds. Now examine the three data bytes on the oscilloscope. The address byte is the first byte, 1001010. There's a start bit, an acknowledge bit. The control byte is the second byte, 0, 1, and the rest zeros. And the data byte is the third byte, in this case containing all ones. And a final acknowledge bit and stop bit. The data sheet explains all of this. This clock is running at 8 kilohertz. But 100 kilohertz works OK too with a little more noise. Perhaps someone can offer some insight into this first byte. There's the oscilloscope, first byte. And the spec sheet explains that these three bits are determined by hardware. The 
the first bit is zero for D to A mode. The first byte is therefore as required. They are the same, obviously, in order for this to work. The Raspberry Pi address is hex 49, which is not the same. But shifted left one bit, it is the same. In other words, the first seven bits of the Raspberry Pi address matches the seven most significant bits of the first byte. This first byte becomes even more mysterious because the programmer does not write it directly. The first byte is written automatically. This line appears to write only two bytes. This line writes the first byte, the address byte, before writing these two bytes, the control byte and the data byte. If you change this 2 to a 0, you can observe this line writing only the address byte. The following steps are required to prepare the Raspberry Pi 2 to use the I to C capability. I use the online help. Good luck. Well, one other thing. Genie on the Raspberry Pi is great, although I prefer using Make and the VI Editor in Linux. The following is the Make file that I used.